Yeah, definitely sketched out on this road. Seems to be going fine so far though. I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, a lot of uh, snow on the road here, a lot of ice. It really looks like in Wyoming out here. After arriving at my motel, it was a relief finding out that I had dodged the storm on my way out of Colorado. There were a lot of close calls last night while driving, but I made it to my hotel alive. Thankfully, I, I didn't die. There's some road closures up ahead, and I have two hotels booked for the next two nights. I'm a little concerned about that, but for now, I'm gonna try to sort of ease my mind with uh, a trip to the hot springs. There's a place called Hobo Hot Pool here in town in Saratoga, Wyoming. So yeah, let's, let's go check it out. Another obstacle, ducks. Boy. The springs were a perfect 107 degrees, but they also had the lobster pot and the not so hot pool. That was like the perfect temperature, it was free. The name is a little odd, but they're still here. There's one guy just chilling in the middle. Come on, man. Post hot springs review, absolutely incredible. I can notice like a significant dip in my stress levels, so. Um, amazing. The stress would quickly return after I found out that the highway ahead was closed due to blowing snow. I would just have to wait this one out. I think I just spent two days basically just indoors. One day was just all editing and waiting for the highway to open. I need to go out and do some shit for sure. of the vehicles on this highway are semis. They got the f***ing bar here. Leave my car running right now. It's 15 degrees outside pretty much. My wiper fluid lines totally frozen. I put some winter wiper fluid in there, so fingers crossed. Today we're going to Jackson, Wyoming, the town in the cradle of the Tetons. Let's check it out. Coming off the road. Dude, my windshield is so f***ing dirty, I can't even clear it off. This is bullshit. We're at Snow King in Jackson, Wyoming. This resort is kind of in the middle of town. The location is great, and it's all my season pass, so let's do this. skied at a lot of resorts. When I ski at a resort now, I can kind of recognize when it's mid, and this resort is mid. It's got a gondola, which is pretty cool, but this is the only way to access the top. There's no express lift or anything. The lift in the back might be an express lift. It's not even that fast. The resort itself isn't that big. I can see why everybody just skis at Jackson Hole. Everybody loves Jackson's Hole. Oh! I then headed into town to see the iconic antler arches, which I had no idea were made from actual elk antlers. And I found out just how visible the ski resort was from downtown. Jackson may be tucked away in the Tetons, but this leisure town feels like the center of activity in America's least populous state. Did a little walk in the uh, town of Jackson. Pretty nice, I like the vibes. This weather when it's like 38 degrees and it's like a combination of rain and snow is like the most comically uncomfortable weather ever. Uh, there's a national elk refuge, so I'm gonna go check it out. What the hell? It's all elk. 
elk. I didn't realize until this point that I had seen this herd earlier that day. In Jackson, Wyoming. It's actually pretty Over 5,000 elk live on the refuge, in addition to other species, such as these beautiful Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. of this road um, on the way down there's a little bit of a incline and uh, I don't know if I got myself in too deep but I think we should be good yeah no, I don't I don't think if I stopped I'd be able to get started again the Corolla is not doing that bad I will say that's the moral of this story the Corolla is basically a RAV4 There's so many elk here, it's crazy. On my way out, the massive herd began to migrate across the plains. It made for quite the spectacle. at my motel, I was met with some bad news. My plan for visiting Grand Teton National Park might have to be postponed. The highway closure, unfortunately, put me on course to face high winds and stormy weather. That's when and where I would be skiing. Yeah. But the next morning, I awoke to surprisingly clear skies. If I were gonna go, I'd have to go now. So I quickly rented some cross-country skis and made my way to the national park. Right there's the Tetons. Come on, show your faces. This was my first time cross-country skiing, so I'll admit, I felt like a newborn baby taking its first steps. All right, I just got the skis on, and I'm on my way. Like I said, it would be kind of a balancing act, and yeah, I'm seeing that, but uh, let's do it. Park Road is closed to cars and bikes for the winter to make way for cross-country skiers. I met one of them on the way and found out who had been making the tracks I was following. But after that point, there were no tracks to follow. I'd have to make my own. just me and the mountains. So I decided to plop down my camera to get some old-fashioned B-roll.
gonna sleep so well tonight. My watch says I burned almost 3,000 calories. What the f Almost four hours, yeah. Yeah, the grade is insane here. This shit is gonna kill my engine. This shit looks depressing, honestly. What's going on, Idaho? Idaho. 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 Why does the A look like that? Idaho. in the city of Idaho Falls, uh, named after stuff that's going on behind me. Honestly, I kind of just came here because the motel was $50 a night, but actually the natural beauty here is really kind of unexpected. I know I've seen a lot of cool volcanic rock on this road trip, but actually Idaho Falls, it's got a lot to boast. The next day, I journeyed across the vast, desolate, snowy landscapes of Idaho's Route 20. Bro, this has got to be like the windiest road of all time. arrived at Bogus Basin, which had amazing 360 degree views of Boise and the surrounding mountains. This honestly was my favorite of the resorts I visited on this trip. I even spent a good amount of time at the train park trying out some new stuff. So I'm here in Boise, skiing yesterday at Bogus Basin was perfect, blue skies, uh, got a lot of practice on the jumps, started doing some rails. Yeah, first time I'd ever done a uh, rail, that was fun. The next part of my trip that sort of goes across Idaho to Montana is unfortunately probably gonna have to be left out. I know I've been dealing with uh, closed highways a lot, but the one leading through Stanley and to Salmon, Idaho, that highway is currently closed due to avalanche danger. Um, <laughs> this has been a very snowy trip, so it makes sense. It's just, it, it's interesting being cock blocked by two closed highways in one trip. But today we're gonna see Boise a little bit um, outside of the old Idaho penitentiary, which is this really deranged ancient jail. <laughs> they did some f***ed up practices, so I'm curious to see what that's like. Let's go check it out. has to be one of the eeriest places I've been. The solitary confinement unit called Siberia gave me serious chills. operated a whopping 101 years and housed many notorious serial killers. Of the 11 state executions in Idaho's history, 10 happened here. I grabbed lunch in downtown Boise and checked out the famous Freak Alley Gallery, an outdoor exhibition of cool graffiti art. <laughs> he 
you want my chips and guac? Can't have it. I just got so confused. It said, arrival 244. It's 233. And I was like, there's no way I can drive like 100 miles in 10 minutes. <laughs> I realized I'm gonna go over a time zone. Oh my God, I'm a moron. slush. Doesn't look like there's a ton of snow up here in northern Idaho, so it's gonna be kind of funny going to like perfect conditions in Boise to a uh, major slush fest, but I think it'll be fun. Cannot complain. Can't complain. Dude, I think I've been on this gondola for literally 10 minutes. You can't even really see the top yet. This is crazy. Yeah, the situation was getting a little slushy, so I decided to head back. I'm gonna go for a nice, fun hike, and we get a snack. It's gonna be wonderful. You know, we're just chilling. tunnel uh, that's it right behind me I thought it'd be like next to the trail or something I kind of wanted to go inside but you know the beautiful hike is enough it really is beautiful out here I only slipped twice in my sketchers I've really been liking these plaques that chronicle the story of Ed Pulaski who led his crew of 45 firefighters into this abandoned mine during this massive forest fire in 1910 and he saved the vast majority of his firefighting crew it's honestly really incredible and it's just kind of fun doing a hike in the snow it's very beautiful out here it's stunning you know this is packed snow some of it is just a slip and slide Just torched my thigh. Doing a little short hike in Coeur d'Alene. I'm pretty sure the French would be incredibly disappointed in that pronunciation. But it's in the Idaho Panhandle. I forgot to mention yesterday that I've been on the road for one month. I didn't know if I'd be doing this trip, really. Then, you know, just life threw circumstances at me and it just kind of came to fruition. You know, I'm very thankful that I was able to do this despite some drama that has occurred. Feeling thankful. Thank you guys for watching all these vlogs. Been getting some really positive feedback in the comments. Thanks for uh, coming along, guys. Let's let's keep on trucking. I don't even. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm doing. The next day, I returned to Tubbs Hill to catch the sunset over Coeur d'Alene Lake.
There's something about sunsets that just makes you feel like you're part of an event. Shitting my pants right now. I got my pepper spray out though, my mountain lion deterrent. We're just out here. Here we go. There's a second there where I saw that mountain lion sign and I realized I had like a quarter mile of dense forest to walk through still. I, I don't think I've ever walked faster. I'm just chilling. I'm just talking to myself in this parking lot. This is sick. I bought some frozen burritos under the assumption that this place would have a microwave. And uh, it doesn't, but I found a fix. And uh, this is it. Got the heater on 80 degrees. Yeah, these babies are cooking. It's not great, for sure. I feel like I've reached a new low. Somebody call Luke. <laughs> Somebody call Luke because this is somewhere in between cold and warm. Oh. I'm not going to win any Michelin stars for this. 